Good morning. This is Pastor Omar broadcasting to you live from my backyard sanctuary here in Gardena. I think you can see a couple of my koi fish in the morning. They greet me in the morning and help me to uh, celebrate life and celebrate God here. I'm so excited today, my friends, uh, to share this broadcast with you. It seems like it has been um, quite a bit of a journey to begin to share this with you. So I know that this particular broadcast is a very important one. The title of, of this broadcast, this morning meditation is Get With The Plan. Get With The Plan. And I am um, coming to you um, from a meditation in ancient scripture that is found in the book of Jeremiah. Maybe you can see uh, my little workstation here. Uh, found in the book of Jeremiah, um, chapter 29. And there it says in Jeremiah, chapter 29, uh, verse, Jeremiah, chapter 29, verse uh, 11. It says this, For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not calamity to give mm -hmm. you a future and a hope. So I hope that you're able to uh, see me uh, now and uh, so I can share with you. Like I said, this is Pastor Omar Muhammad. I am um, a proactive agent of change who communicates so that others might be healed, liberated, and appreciated. Today, I just want you to be encouraged uh, and appreciate who you are. You are someone who God spends a lot of energy, thought energy, to make plans for your life. Like I said, the title of this one is called Get With The Plan. And um, so I have been uh, meditating on this particular passage of ancient scripture for some time now. I found it um, sort of like by accident. I was thinking about something, I was thinking about plans, and all of a sudden I ran into this whole concept of Get With The Plan. And because uh, cause in some way I wanted to have the plan, I wanted to have the mind of God uh, in me, working in me, so that I can get with God's plan. I'm like, man, so, things are going so so crazy uh, in my life, and I don't understand uh, all the things that's going on in my life. I don't, I don't know about you. I know I'm blessed. I know I'm anointed. I know I'm appointed. I know um, that I am a gifted believer. But it just seems like some of the pieces are not coming together, like. Um, I would hope for them to be. Some things just don't, they're, they're not fitting and I don't, I don't understand them. Yet, I'm called to be this um, powerful, anointed, appointed uh, minister of the good news of God. So, I was like, man, what do I have to do? And I heard God say, get with the plan. Get with the plan? I was like, get with the plan? What's that all about? Get with the plan. So, I, uh, I you know, did my thing and looked up and found the scripture where it said this, uh, for I know the plan I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and give you a bright future. Welcome, uh, show me something. I'm glad you joined. I hope I'm here to show you something today. Something about how good and how great um, the God is that we have to work with. Today, uh, show me something. I'm talking about uh, a subject that came to me uh, called Get with the plan. Get with the plan. And so I was, um, good morning, good to see you, thank you. I was, um, I was con contemplating and thinking about this concept of getting with the plan. And I was saying how that uh, although I know that my, me personally, I'm an anointed, appointed, gifted uh, human being who's uh, anointed to share good news of the living God in this time and age. And I think that's a wonderful thing because I get to use tools like this and I get to uh, hang out with people like you, show me something. Uh, on internet. I mean, I use technology, Periscope, and all these other things. This is a great time to be alive. Uh, and so I know that um, if any time, uh, this is the time where it says, uh, this is the day that the Lord has made. Yeah, this is the day that we have all these skills and abilities. And we are already doing things that um, my chief discipler, Jesus, uh, said he, he would do greater things than need. We're already doing that. I mean, I'm meeting people by way of uh, internet. I'm, I'm talking to people all across my, my pulpit is international. You know, I'm doing things that Jesus, you know, 
had in his mind, I'm sure, but he was not there to do them, but we're doing it. So it's get with the plan. And so this is what I, I got from this, this concept of get with the plan. Uh, God has been thinking of us, about us. It says, for I know the plans I have for you. But what I had to do showed me something. I had to go back and take a look at what this context was because I was hanging out with some brothers. Brother Stephan, thank you for helping me uh, put together this sermon, uh, this message. Uh, thank you so much. I was with, he's with the Rights of Passive program and I was hanging out with them with this weekend with some other fellas and I was saying, man, I'm, I'm stuck here. I, I want to present a message uh, on um, Periscope, but I don't know what it really means. I, I got a scripture. The scripture says, For I know the plans that I have towards you, saith the Lord, or declare the Lord. Plans to uh, prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. I got that, but I don't understand how you get to that plan. I don't I don't get this. And so Brother Stephan was like, man, I, I, I don't know. If I was you, I'll look at the context. I'll go look at what it says, where you got that scripture from. So I, I took his advice. I went back and I looked at the context. And when I looked at the context, I realized that what the context of this is, is very much like African Americans are here. The children uh, of God of, of Israel, the Hebrew children, they had been um, somewhat disobedient in their life. They had tripped a little bit. And, uh, and what God did, he allowed another king to come in and take them out of their land, Jerusalem. That's their, the city of peace, their peaceful situation, and take them, capture them, and put them in another land. They ended up in Babylon. So they were in Babylon, and right, and all the, all the preachers and the people around them were saying, man, it's going to be good, it's going to be all right, God's going to come and deliver us right away, it's going to be fit, just, just hang in there, just hang in there. But that's not what the scripture said. God said, man, those prophets are lying to you. This is what I told them. You're going to be in your stuff for 70 years. I am doing this. I'm bringing some correction to the stuff that your foreparents did, and I'm just going to work this out. You're going to be there. In fact, this is what I want you to do. I want you to do these four things. I want you to uh, go buy you some houses. I want you to go plant you some, um, some gardens so you can eat some healthy food. I want you to go marry some women, have some children, and I want you to be kind to the city that I have you placed in. And I was like, man, those four things are powerful truths right there. Four things God wants you to do. So whatever situation you find yourself in, God will have us to do this. Go ahead on and invest in the future. Buy us a house. Be secure. Take care of some business. If God will allow you to do that, do that. Grow you some food, <laughs> some moderate food. Get with the plan. You know what? Right now, it's getting serious now. I went to the store at uh, Sam's Club. They were selling raisins. They were touting the raisins that the raisins had no seeds. And I said, why don't those raisins have any seeds? <laughs> and the lady was looking at me like dumbfounded, like, what? What did he just say? I said, why don't the raisins have seeds? I mean, why don't the grapes have seeds? He said, I guess they did them like that. I said, yeah, they must have genetically modified those grapes so they don't have the ability to produce anymore. We can't grow seeds from those grapes. And they want us to eat that? Well, that's a pretty interesting thing. <laughs> I was like, you know what? I think I'm going to pass on those genetically modified grips. So I can understand now the wisdom of God telling the people, go and plant you a garden. Buy you some property, get you a house, plant you a garden. He said, get you a house and dwell in it. So make it nice, live in it, take advantage of it. Get you a, a garden, plant some good food so you can have some organically grown healthy vegetables for you to eat. He said, go and get married. Start reproducing. Stop doing all this stuff that causes us not to have re children. We need to have children in this next generation. We need to have God-loving, honoring, caring children to marry our sons and, to our, and our daughters. So go get some food. <laughs> go get some houses. Go get some, um, go plant you a garden. Get you a husband or wife. Get you a family. And be good to the place where I put you. They were in Babylon. They were in the, in the place of their captors. You know, uh, my friends used to back in and say, we're in Babylon and America is Babylon. Well, I don't know about all that, and it probably is uh, sub to some degree, but I'm over here in Southern California. God has me here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to bless the city of Los Angeles. I'm going to bless the city of Gardena because God said, I'm going to bless those who bless that city. So I'm going to do what I can to be a blessing to this community, and I want you, wherever you are in the world, maybe somebody need to tell me where you are. If you're in Florida, uh, i got people from Hawaii, wherever you are, shout that out. But wherever you are, be a blessing to that community. Be a wise and, 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 and a wonderful citizen to that community. Get there. Yeah, thank you for the love. Get with the plan. God has equipped you, give you wisdom, not to understand it, start some business, do something, and let God be a blessing through you. So the plan is that God wants to dwell through you and make himself known through you. He wants his love to come through you. He wants his wisdom and understanding to come through you. Yes. Oh, you're in the Bay Area North Bay. Give Bay Area some love, y'all. Bay Area's in the house. 
So we want to be a blessing to the Bay Area. God needs people in the Bay Area, right? He needs people wherever we are. And what do you need him to do to show and manifest his love because he's a spirit? How can you love a God that you can't see if you don't love the God that's in you and me? Ah, think about that. That's a good one. You got to think about that. But the thing is, my friend, listen. God, he said he planned. He has, he has put a plan. Though. So even though we might be in a crazy situation, even though we might feel like we are abandoned by God, we might feel like God is even punishing us. We might have some guilt or shame or forgotten. You know some crazy stuff because the people of God feel that sometimes. I was watching the show uh, last night and it was talking about how these men just, they, they were preachers, but they had abandoned God. They didn't even love, the, they, they were preaching about a God, but they didn't really believe the God that they preached about. Now for me, I'm not trying to be in that kind of person. Pastor O does not do that. I'm trying to tell you about the God that I have interaction with. I love God. Remember when I did that message? I love God. You don't love God? What's wrong with you? And I, I don't know how anybody can be in this world and not love God because he's thinking about how to bless you and encourage you and to help you. He said, man, I don't have a plan to destroy you. I have a plan for peace and not for evil for you. I have a plan of well-being and not for calamity for you. I have a plan to prosper you and not to harm you. Do you know that's what God has in store for you? He has a wonderful plan. In fact, he said this. He said, I declare that. I, the Lord, he said, declare the Lord. I am the I am. I got all things and all power in my hand. I can do what I need to do. I can be who I need to be for you. Some people, he need to be a lawyer. He got that lawyer, lawyer situation. Sometimes he, he need to work. He need to be a counselor. He got the counseling situation. God got whatever situation you need. He's got it for you. So he wants us today to get with the plan. Get with his plan. Now, I was like, man, how do I get with the plan, man? I'm down. I, I, I believe, Pastor O. I believe God. I believe what he said. How do I get with the plan? Then my friend Stephan told me, why don't you go look in Proverbs? And when I looked over at Proverbs, I think it was chapter 16, verses 1 through 9. Proverbs was telling me about how, you know, this is how you get with the program. You plan. You do what? I said plan. You make a plan. Because here's what I understood. From Proverbs, we have to make a plan. God allows us to be co-laborers in this world. Yes, he does. He allowed us to co-create with him. So that means that, uh, and, that's, and that's the thing, God really convicted me about that because, you know, I kind of let life go. I let life go as it is and I just follow it and I just fall in. But if I want to be more successful, if I want to prosper and be more successful, I got I to gotta sit down. Me and my wife got to sit down and plan some stuff. Yesterday we were planning how we we're going to do these, um, be these wonderful marriage uh, gurus. I mean, it's going to be something. We got something coming down the pike that's going to be great for us. Look for that coming soon. But we have to plan. Uh, if you just come in here, I hope. Thank you to the welcome to the rebroadcast. This is Pastor Omar Muhammad. I am a proactive agent of change. And today my topic is get with the plan. And the plan is coming from the concept where God said in his word, the ancient scripture, that um, he said, For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to for your welfare and not for your calamity. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Other ones say plans to prosper you. Other ones say plans to for your welfare, to help you. But the thing is, the point is that God got some plans. He's writing stuff together. He's putting stuff together right now for you and for me. He got plans. But what he wants you to do is he wants you to get a plan. Work your plan. Put your plan. Write something down. Write it and run with it. And then take that plan and give it to somebody who cool. give it to God. Show your plan to God. The scriptures, when I looked at the other thing, it says, roll your plans by God. Whatever plan you have, roll your plan by God. Let him look at it. Then he can put his stamp on it. He can bless it. He can show you how to implement your plan. Because once he does it, he's going he's gonna to develop that plan for you. So how do we do this? How do we get with the plan? First of all, we plan. And we realize that God is going to be a co-planner with it. Ask him, invite him into the planet. Lord, I want to plan for my success. You said in the ancient scripture that you have a plan to prosper me and not to harm me. That you have a plan to give me a blessed hope. Your morning message is so positive, definitely uplifting. Thank you. I appreciate that. I'm so glad you're getting this. And, 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 and it's, it's, it's coming straight from God for you. Show me something. You are appointed and anointed by God. I'm showing you something today, and guess what? You're going to show somebody else something today. You're going to share this broadcast with somebody. You're going to do this and say, man, this, this guy right here is seeking. He's going to God, and he's getting something so that we can have something positive. We need something positive. The world is full of a whole bunch of negativity, and we don't need to dwell on it. If you notice, I'm not dwelling on the negativity. I'm dwelling on the positivity. I'm talking about how you and God can co-partner and co-labor together to bring about something totally altogether new. And so I hope that you're getting this today. I'm not going to be labored. I'm not going to stay with you longer than I have to. Uh, well, because it don't take all that. It just takes us to, to get in and get out. 
So today's, what is the day? The day's plan is get with the plan. How are we going to get with the plan? We're going to plan. We're going to sit down. We're going to meditate. We're going to pray. We're going to ask God, give me a plan for the success. You already promised that you have a plan for me. You already promised that you have a hope for me. You have a bright, 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 bright future for me. And you ain't saying that I don't acknowledge where you are. You say all things work together for good. So I'm so glad you say that because you know what? We know where we are. <laughs> some of that stuff is not right. Some of our stuff is just jacked up and cracked up. I know some of my stuff is just jacked up. Thank you. I'm glad you're sharing that with them this morning. Thank you. Uh, she helps me say, amen, amen, amen. So, and, and that's your planning partner right there. Your wife is your planning partner. Do you realize that the two of you can run things in your neighborhood in the Bay Area? Do you realize that you you praying together, you you covenanting together, you can agree on something that says whatsoever things you ask and agree you will have. We in this time where, 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 where God was talking about, if we just ask it, we can have what we want. All we have to do is just trust God to bring it to pass and he will bring it to pass. He will make it happen for us in such a way that we will be so happy that we, we did what God would have us to do. So that partnership that you have, that, that wonderful, powerful unit of being a husband and a wife is a powerful thing. So I do want you to understand that. So take this message with them. Know this, that God has a plan specifically for you. And he understands all that crap that we living in. Believe me. He was telling that, he was telling that original message to some people he knew that they were displaced, they were homeless, they were like the Syrians, they were displaced and homeless, they had no place to go. He said, no, I, I'm going to tell you, now you're in that captivity, that's all right, I'm going to be with you in this situation. You're not by yourself. It's almost like, you heard the old stories about Daniel and the lion den. The reason why them lions didn't eat Daniel because God was there in the lion den with him in the situation. The reason why them, them boys, uh, Shadrach, B Meshach, and the bad Negro didn't get burned up. If you, I'm talking that old scripture stuff. Y'all might know some of that, a little bit of stuff from that. But if you're talking about those communities, the reason why they didn't get burned up because they said there was a person that looked like the son of God in the situation with them. And I'm saying that God revealed to us the name Emmanuel. God with us. So he's right here with us, not shielding us from everything, but allowing us to know that we together can walk through the fire. We can walk through the lion pit. We can go through this, this crazy timing. On the other side, God got a bright hope and a future plan for us. I hope you receive this today. I am so happy and excited about this word today. I don't know what to do. God's got a plan for me <laughs> and a plan for you. He's just that bad of a planner. He is the awesome coordinator. There's none like him. He is the great coordinator. He's coordinating everything for your and my good. All right, my friend. This is Pastor O. Remember my saying is keep your hands clean and your heart pure. If you want to hook up with me in other mediums, I am Pastor Omar A. Muhammad, THM on Facebook. Just look at Omar A. Muhammad, comma, THM on my Facebook. That's my page. Like my page. You have a good day today, my friend, too. Thank you for coming. I'm going to put it on a report class so you can report broadcast this some kind of way, maybe on Facebook or Twitter, find out where it is, and it's going to be report broadcast, maybe on Catch, and then you can share it with other people. I'm also on, um, on Twitter as Pastor underscore Omar underscore. Uh, I'm out there. I'm on, on y'all, so I'm, I'm out there. What am I doing? I am creating space for God to show himself to be the mighty God he is who's relevant. Was this a relevant mission? I believe it was a relevant message for you. I know it definitely for me. I'm so glad. I'm going with the hope knowing that God got a plan. So today, I'm committed to get with the plan. I'm going to pray. I'm going to ask God to help me to get with his plan so that we can be on one accord. This is Pastor O. Keep your hands clean and your heart pure. I'm out.